Hello friends and welcome to Edusati. Today we will be covering the topic of ratio and proportion. We will look at ratios, we compare them, we will look at the concept of compounded ratio, then we will move to proportions, we will discuss about continued proportion, component or dividendo and we will end up with the application of ratios and proportions. In the application, we will discuss about directly proportional, inversely proportional and partnership. So, the first thing is, what is ratio? Ratio is the comparison of two like quantities. For finding out the ratio of two quantities, say A and B, the ratio would be donated by A ratio B and is measured as the fraction of A is to B. So, ratio is a comparison of two like quantities. This like word is very very important. I cannot take two quantities which have dissimilar units and find a ratio. Ratio is always of two like quantities. So A ratio B that means I am comparing A with respect to B. The units of both A and B would be same. To give me a ratio which is unitless. This is very very important. Ratio does not have any unit. Ratio is a unitless quantity and ratio is for like quantities. Let's look at an example. A ratio B is 2 is to 5. That means for every 5 parts of B, there are 2 parts of A. Or I can say A is 2 by 5 of B. Convert this into the, the decimal form. A is 0 0.4 of B. Or A is 40% of B. So, I am comparing two like quantities A and B and I say A is only 40% of B. In other words, I can say A is 60% less than B. I can also compare with respect to A as the base. I can write B as 5 by 2 of A. So, I can take any one as the base. Whatever is in the denominator usually is taken as the base. However, I can always convert it back. So, B is 2.5 times of A in terms of percentage. B is 250% of A. So, B is very, very, you know, uh, very, very big as compared to the value of A. B, in other words, is 150% more than A. So, I find a relative comparison of two quantities A and B to give me a ratio which is unit less. Let's, let's uh, understand how we uh, proceed with the questions of ratio with the help of the following example. Given two numbers A and B are in the ratio 2 is to 5 and their sum is 1400, find the numbers. Now, ratio is a relative measure of things. It is not an absolute value. That means, the first quantity is not 2 and the second quantity is not 5. But relatively, it is coming out to two B in the ratio 2 is to 5. So, I will convert it into an absolute quantity first. I will write A as 2K and B as 5K. Now, what is this K? K is a common factor which has been cancelled out when I am taking out the ratio 2 by 5. So, I take the ratio K gets cancelled out. So, the absolute quantity is 2k and 5k. Now, as per the question, 2k plus 5k, which is a plus b, would add up to give me a value of 1400. 7k, 1400, I get the value of k, which is basically the common factor which has been cancelled out. So, a is 2k, 400, b is 7k, sorry, b is, uh, b is 5k, so 1000. Let's, let's take another example. 5 kg of wheat flour is mixed with 500 grams of sugar. What is the ratio of sugar to the rest of the mixture after adding 1.5 kg of water? Now, the first thing which has to be of uh, concern here is the units of all the quantities needs to be same. So, either I can convert everything in terms of grams or I can convert everything in terms of kg. So, let me take the first thing. I will write everything in terms of gram. So, I have 5000 grams of wheat flour, 500 grams of sugar extract and 1500 grams of water. I have three quantities with me. If I add all of them up, the total quantity that I have is 7000 grams or 7 
kg. The question, the ratio that I have to find is sugar extract. Sugar extract that I have is 500 gram to the rest of the mixture. So I have to find this ratio with respect to the rest of the mixture, not the total mixture. So the rest of the mixture which is there is 6500. So this is the ratio of sugar to the ratio of rest of the mixture not the total mixture. So this is 5 over 65 which gives me an answer of 1 by 13. Had the question been find the ratio of sugar to the total mixture so that would have been 500 over 7000 which would have given me an answer of 1 by 14. So my answer for this question would be option number would be option number D. Important points to remember before you know looking at the questions of ratio. First, ratio would always be of two like quantities. I cannot take dissimilar quantities and find out their ratio. Ratio is a thing which is unitless. You have no units for ratio. Second, ratio is not an absolute value that you have. Ratio is only a relative measure of two similar quantities it is not an absolute value so when I have to write it into an absolute value I introduce a constant which is k which is actually the thing which is getting cancelled out when I am finding out ratio very very important uh, point to remember is multiplying a ratio with the same constant in the numerator and denominator does not alter the ratio so if you have a ratio a by b you multiply the ratio with a constant in the numerator and denominator the ratio would not change so 2 by 3 is equal to 4 by 6 will be equal to 200 by 300 because what is the constant that I'm multiplying with is 100 I, that is still be equal to 2000 over 3000 that will still be equal to 2 lakh over 3 lakh 4 lakh over 6 lakh and so on comparison of ratios very very important thing if I have to compare the two ratios which are given to me, A by B and C is to D, I can follow various methods to compare them. The first method that we'll be discussing will be a cross multiplication method. Now how do I proceed? I have A by B and I have C by D. I have to compare the two ratios and find out the bigger one or the smaller one. What I'll do, I'll cross multiply the things. I'll find out the value of AD, I'll find out the value of BC. Then. If AD is greater than BC, if AD is greater than BC, that means the first ratio that I have is greater than the second ratio. If AD and BC comes out to be equal, if the product of numerator of the first and denominator of the second is equal to the product of denominator of the first and denominator of second comes out to be equal, that means the two ratios that you have A by B and C by D are also equal. The third one being, if A by A, A, B comes out to be, sorry, if A into D, the product, comes out to be less than B into C, that means the first ratio that I have is lesser than the second ratio or the second ratio is greater. Let's look at an uh, example. Which of the following is greater? 18 by 19 or 21 by 23? So, in order to find that, I can multiply the I can multiply uh, the numerators with the denominators of the other to find out to find out the product AD and BC. So I find out 18 into 23, I find out 19 into 21. So in this case, if I find out the product, this product is coming out to be greater than the other product. This employs the first ratio is greater than the second ratio that we have. The second method. The second method is if the ratios are given uh, in a standard form, I can always convert it into a decimal form and compare the value in a decimal form. Let's look at a question. The question is which of the following is the greatest? 2 by 3. 2 by 3. If I remember, 1 by 3 is 33.33%. So 2 by 3 will be equal to 66% converted into decimal will give me a value of 0.667. Similarly, I can convert all the other fractions into their equivalent decimal form and then compare them. 2 by 7. I know the value of 1 by 7 
1 by 7 in terms of percentage was 14.28 percent in terms of fraction would be 0 0.1428 so 2 by 7 would give me an answer which is double of this which is 208.286 5 by 9 1 by 9 the value was 11.11 percent .11 in terms of fraction I converted and I multiply with it with 5 to get to an answer 0 0.5555 7 by 11 1 by 11 is 9.09 percent in a fraction 0 0.0909 multiply with 7 so the answer that you get is 0 0.6363 and so on so I can I've converted all the ratios that I have into an equivalent decimal form comparing the decimal form I can say that out of all these 2 by 3 comes out to be the highest the third method for comparison of ratios is comparing the numerators and denominators. Let's look at the two cases. The first case is if A by B is greater than 1. So if you have a ratio, for example, 7 by 8, this ratio is greater than, sorry, uh, if you have a ratio which is greater than uh, 1, let's take the ratio which is greater than 1, 8 by 7. If I add a constant thing to the numerator and denominator, the new ratio that I get would be smaller than the original ratio. So 8 by 7, I add 1, 1, I get 9 by 8. So if I solve out for the two things, the original ratio will turn out to be greater than the new ratio that I have. If I subtract the common difference instead of adding. So if a common difference is subtracted, let me subtract 1 in again. This is 7 by 6. So if I just, uh, you know, uh, solve this thing out. When I subtract, the ratio turns out to be greater than the original ratio. So if you have A by B, if a constant is added to the numerator and denominator, the ratio would be lesser. If a constant is subtracted from the numerator and denominator, the ratio would be greater than the original ratio AB. Reverse is the case if the ratio is less than 1. So you take an example of 2 by 3. Now if you add a constant to a numerator and denominator. So let me add 1 and let me add 1. 2 by 3 is 0 0.66. 3 by 4 is 0 0.75. So if you look at it, this is a greater value than this. So if I add, if I add, it becomes greater than the original value. Whereas if I subtract, subtract 1 from the numerator and denominator both. So this is 0 0.66, this is 0 0.5. If I subtract, the value comes out to be smaller than the original value. Just the reverse case. So you have to look at the original uh, ratio is it greater than 1 or is it lesser than 1 if it's greater than 1 addition will decrease the ratio if it is lesser than 1 addition will increase the ratio compounded ratio there are some ratios which are given to us a by b this is one ratio c by d another ratio e by f there's some ratio Compounded ratio is a ratio which is a combined effect of all the ratios. So that means I multiply all the ratios to get to uh, to get to uh, a compounded ratio, which is A C A uh, C E over B D F. That means I'll multiply the individual ratio to get a compounded ratio. The next proportions. If if there are four or more than you know four quantities which are given to you these quantities these quantities are said to be in proportion if if the ratio of first two is equal to the ratio of next two is equal to the ratio of next two and so on so the quantities are said to be in proportion if the ratio of first two is equal to the ratio of next two is equal to the ratio of next two and it goes on. The first term is known as the first proportional, second term second proportional, third term third proportional, 
फोर्थ प्रपोर्शन फिफ्थ प्रपोर्शन सिक्स प्रपोर्शन एंड सो ऑन सो इफ टू रेशियोज आर इक्वल ऑल द फोर नंबर आर सेट टू बी इन प्रपोर्शन सो इफ आई गिव यू रेशियोज ए बाय बी इक्वल टू सी बाय डी दैट मीन्स द रेशियो ऑफ फर्स्ट टू इज इक्वल टू द रेशियो ऑफ नेक्स्ट टू आई वुड से ऑल द फोर नंबर ए बी सी डी आर इन प्रपोर्शन Two ratios are equal. Numbers are in proportion. If numbers are in proportion, ratio of first two equal to the ratio of next two, and so on. Continued proportion. A set of numbers are said to be in continued proportion if, if the denominator of the first ratio act as a denominator of the second ratio. The denominator of second, denominator of third, denominator of third. Numerator of fourth and so on. So I'm not taking the ratio of first two and next two. It is the ratio of first two to to maintaining the same numerator the next. So a by b with b by c with c by d with d by e with e by f f by g and so on. Here also the first term is known as first proportion, second term second proportion or the mean proportion. third term third proportion and so on the number of quantities should be minimum 3 so that means a by b is equal to b by c or i can say b square is equal to ac or b is equal to under root of ac here b is known as mean proportion so the minimum number of quantities that i need are 3 For a continued proportion, for a normal proportion case that I have done just earlier, I need minimum of four quantities because a by b has to be equal to c by d. This b and c are different when I am talking about the case of a proportion. Whereas in continued proportion, the numerators are actually the denominators of the previous term. Componendo and dividendo. If two ratios are given to me as equal, that means the four numbers A, B, C, D are given to be in proportion, then I can apply the concept of componendo dividendo. Here, I would say A, B, C, D are in proportion because the ratio of first two is equal to the ratio of the next two. So I can apply the concept of componendo and dividendo. Componendo, I add one to both the terms. I add one to both the sides. The ratios would remain same. I can take it and I can write it as a plus b over b is equal to c plus d over b. Dividendo, instead of adding one, I subtract one from both the sides. So a by b minus one and c by d minus one. Uh, the numerator that I get is a by a minus b. Uh, and c minus d the denominators remain same now if i look at the terms that i have got as my you know things in componendo and dividendo so if i divide equation number 1 with equation number 2 what i get is componendo and dividendo the numerator is the addition of uh, the terms and the denominator is the difference of the two terms of the uh, ratio Let's let's move on to the applications of ratio and proportion. The first application is directly proportional. Directly proportional means y is directly proportional to x. That means if the value of x increases, y will also increase. If the value of x decreases, y value will also decrease. That means y is dependent upon y is dependent upon x and what is the dependence it is directly directly means they have to move in the same direction if x is increasing y would increase if x is decreasing y would decrease and the next term is proportional proportional means if x becomes double if x becomes double y will also become double of the original this is original if x becomes half of the original y will also become half of the original so the sign change is the same that means they move they increase or decrease in the same direction and the magnitude change is also the same if 
magnitude change is also the same if x becomes double y will become double if x becomes half y will also become half inversely proportional y is inversely proportional to x that means if x will increase y would decrease if x would decrease this implies y will increase that means the sign change or the movement will happen in an opposite direction if one thing increases the other thing is bound to decrease what about the magnitude if x becomes double y would become half of the original if x becomes half of the original y becomes double so the magnitude change would remain you know would remain the same but yes in a reciprocal way and the sign change is in an opposite direction directly related directly related means directly you know i hope you understand the word directly now that means y is directly proportional to directly related to x if x increases y increases if x decreases y decreases that means sign change will remain the same sign change will remain the same but magnitude change is not the same that means if i say x becomes double y will not become double y may become double y may become 3 times 4 times 10 times 0.5 times 1.5 times so i know y would increase but how much increase that will not be the same so if i have to write it in terms of an equation i would write it as y is equal to k1 x plus k2 this if if k2 is equal to 0 it is a case of directly proportional that means the uh, magnitude change is al also the same but if k2 is not equal to 0 it is a case of directly related so the equation that we write is y is equal to k1 x plus k2 so this is something like a fixed cost and a variable cost inversely related again the same way if x increases y would reduce if y x decreases y would increase that means the sign change is the inverse but the magnitude change would not be the same so that means if y becomes double if x becomes double y will not become half if x becomes 1/3 y will not become 3 times it can be any other value as well in case of proportional i know the exact value in case of related i don't know the exact value so if i write it in terms of equation the equation that i will get would be y is equal to k1x plus k2 whenever i have to remove the constant of proportionality with an equality sign i put a constant so if i have to form the equations for a case of directly for a case of directly proportional it will be y proportional to x or y is equal to kx for related it will be y is equal to k1x plus something k2 inversely proportional y inversely proportional to x y is equal to kx inversely related y is equal to k1 over x plus k2 which is some other constant that comes into picture let's look at the questions related to directly and inversely related and proportional the height of the person varies as the square root of his age so this is the information that is given to us that means height varies as the square root of its age okay so if i have to remove the proportionality sign i would write height is equal to k under root of a a is the age now this is the height in the first situation that means height would depend upon age in the second situation if i write the formula h2 is equal to k under root a2 now what is k k is a constant the value of constant would not change under any circumstance so the question says first information is given to me i have to find out the value of the second what will be the height in 16 years so i have to find what will be the height in 16 years if he is 3 foot feet tall at the age of 4 years 
so what i can do is i can find out the value of k from the first equation put it into the second or i can divide the two equations h1 over h2 is equal to under root of a1 over a2 what is the age first 4 what is the age second 16 root so this is 1 by 2 so that means h1 into twice will be equal to h2 so my answer he was 3 feet tall at the age of 4 he'll be 6 feet tall at the age of 16 years this is how we solve the question related to directly proportional another question a precious stone worth Rs. 18,000 is accidentally dropped and break it into three pieces whose weights are in the ratio 5 is to 6 is to 7. The value of a stone, now what is given to you, the value of a stone is directly proportional to the square of its weight. This is given to me. So value will be equal to K W square. So what was the weight in the first case that we'll just add up calculate the weight loss sorry calculate the loss and its value if any occurred because of the breakage now the weights are in the ratio 5 is to 6 is to 7 this is not an absolute quantity I'll convert it into absolute quantities the weight of first is 5x second is 6x and the last is 7x if I add all of them up the total weight comes out to be 18x so 18x diamond was dropped and it broke into three pieces the original value of the diamond would depend upon the original weight so which is 18x and whole square of it the new value of diamond would depend upon the new weight so what is the first weight that I have 5x whole square value of the first diamond plus 6x whole square the value of the second diamond k 7x whole square the value of the third diamond that I have if I just compute the two cases that are there I would get the value I would get the value of the original original uh, diamond it was 324x squared into k now if I add up the values uh, which are there in the second case so if I just uh, look at the values and add them up I would get the value which will be much 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 lesser than the value of the diamond in the first case why because the weights have dropped weights have dropped drastically right this value this original value was equal to 18,000 I know which is very less for a diamond but 18,000 in the second case this value would not be equal to 18,000 so I'll find out the values of a constant which is x square k which will be 18,000 over 324 if you are able to divide it uh, exactly good enough if you are not able to divide it don't get the value in fractions keep it as such so if I look at the second thing what will be the value it will be 110 into the value of x square k which is 18000 over 324 so if I just uh, solve uh, this case I would get to know I would get to know uh, the value for the new diamond that I have which will be much 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 lesser than the original so I hope you would have solved it by now it comes out to be 6111.11 so the original uh, diamond was worth rupees 18,000 uh, the new diamond is in the ratio or oh, sorry is worth rupees 6,000 only so there's been a loss loss of a little less than 12,000 rupees because of the breakage I hope uh, the question is clear to you now next question the cost of organizing a party varies, varies directly as the number of invitees if there are 40 invitees the cost works out to be 200 per head if there are 50 invitees the cost works out to be 180 per head find the variable cost and the fixed cost and the total cost of the number of people who attended the party was 60 so cost would depend upon the fixed cost plus the variable cost now variable cost would depend upon 
the number of people who are attending the party right so if there are 40 uh, if there are 40 invitees what is the total cost 40 are the number of invitees 200 is the cost per person the total cost that comes out to be is 800 so 8000 that is equal to fixed cost plus 40k k is the constant that we have in the second case if there are 50 invitees the cost comes out to be 180 per head so that will still be equal to fixed cost plus 50k which is the variable cost that you have now if you subtract the two equations if you subtract the two equations what you will get you will get fixed cost which is cancelled out from both the sides so you will be left out with a calculation which will give you an answer for the fixed cost now once the fi uh, sorry which will get give you an answer for the value of k so once k once k is determined you can put it back in any of the equations to get to the value of fixed cost so i'll give you uh, 30 seconds to solve out for the value of k the value of k this comes out to be 1000 the value of k comes out to be 100 so that means 100 rupees is the additional cost with per person if i put the value of 100 into any of the equations that i have i can solve out the value for fixed cost the fixed cost comes out to be 4000 rupees so the question is the variable cost which is 100 rupees per person and the fixed cost fixed cost is 4000 rupees the total cost if 60 people so if 60 people are there 4000 is the fixed cost that anyways will be occurred for 60 people additional 100 rupees will be levied so this will be 6000 and 4000 the total cost of the party comes out to be 10000 the last concept for today's uh, lecture is the concept of partnership partnership means there are two or more people who enter into a business with different investments with different time horizons in what ratio would the profits be divided among them so let's take the case where there are three partners a b and c their investments are in the ratio are in some ratio these are the ratio of their investments so these are the initial investment that they started up with this is the original time that they have started up with the profits that they will get the profits of a with respect to b and with respect to c would be in the compounded ratio of their investment into time factor investment of b time of b investment of c time of c i'll find out this money into time factor for each one of them the ratio of the money time factor would be the ratio in which the profits would be divided so whatever is the investment into the time factor for each of them that factor will be calculated and the profits would be divided in the same ratio <clears throat> let's understand it with the help of an example a b and c enter into a partnership with the amount 10000 20000 and 30000 respectively profits at the end of the year were 18000 what are their respective shares now if i look here the investment amounts are not equal the investment amount are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 this is the ratio of their investment amount what about the time there is no information about the time which is given so i will assume that the time is same for all of them so if one factor is same the profits will be divided only in the ratio of their initial amount that means the profits would be divided in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 total parts 6 profit of a will be 1 by 6 of the total profit which is the total profit of 18000 so a will get 3000 as the profit b b will get 2/6 of the profit the total total parts of 6 so he'll get 6000 profit and c will get 3 by 6 that means 1/2 of the profit c makes 9000 as the profit this is the ratio in which the profits would be divided and uh, another example the same example has been modified where i am keeping investment amount same and what i am only changing is the time period of investment now here investment of a 
investment of B and investment of C are same. The only thing that matters is time of A, time of B and time of C, time of investment. He's invested for six months, he's invested for nine months and the third one has invested for all the 12 months. Looking at a ratio, the ratio of their time horizons is 2 is to 3 is to 4. So again, the profits would be divided in the ratio of their time factor. So what is it? There are total of, if you look at the total of 9 parts, profit of A is 2 parts out of 9 parts out of the total money that you have of 18,000. So A has a profit which is equal to 4,000. B, profit of B would be 3 parts of the, of the total line. That means one third of the profit. So it comes out to be 6,000. Profit of C will be 4 parts out of 9 parts and the total profit that they had experienced is 18,000. So this will come out to be 8,000. This is the ratio in which the profits are divided. The third scenario in which the investment amounts are also different and the time horizons are also different. In case both the things are changing, I would look at a combined factor which is known as a money time factor or the investment time factor and the profits would be divided in the ratio of money time factor. Money time factor. So if I look at it, money A 10,000, B 20,000, C 30,000. This is for 6 months, this is for 9 months, this is for 12 months. So I can find out the ratio of their investment amounts where it is 1 is to 2 is to 3. I can find out the ratio of their uh, time factors which is 2 is to 3 is to 4. So the money time factor would be in the ratio. I will find out a compounded ratio 2 is to 6 is to 12. 2 is to 6 is to 12. 12. So if you solve it out, this is 1 is to 3 is to 6. So there will be total of 10 parts. Profit of A will be 1 by 10th of 18,000. B will be 3 by 10th and profit of C will be 6 by 10th of 18,000. However, you can also find the money time factor first and then find out its ratio. So for money time factor, I will multiply the money with the time. So if you just find out the ratio 6, 3 and 6. This is the same ratio that you would get. The profits will be divided in the ratio of money time factor or compounded ratio of their ratio of investment amounts and time horizon.